Hi, Kim. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I wonder if you could just start by just sharing a little bit about your family. Tell us a little bit about your kids and their ages, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, I have a daughter that is um, seven years old. She'll be eight in April, and she's in second grade. And my son is five, and he just started kindergarten this year. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm married, <laughs> as you well know. And um, we're just um, a very um, close family and do a lot together. And yeah, I think you have a sister that smokes. Yes. So the kid's aunt. Yes. Okay. You know, what kind of message is she giving off about smoking? Well, <clears throat> we had a long conversation about, um, about her smoking because I've asked her many times, you know, to please try to quit. And she has tried. And, um, but she does smoke around my children. She and does? My, um, th she does not smoke in the house around her own children. So she's one of those smokers that go out on the back porch and smoke, um, which I guess is better than being in the house. Um, but my children do ask a lot of questions about it and wonder what it is and, and why she still smokes. And, um, and have you found some ways to use her example to get your message across that you don't want them to smoke? Yes. Um, when it's funny because the conversation started with my younger son who asked me um, probably when he was like four, Mommy, what's that? What does Aunt Judy have in her mouth? And I had to go through the conversation of explaining what it was and, and he asked me what she was doing with it and why is there some, you know, what's that coming out? So the conversation started there. And at that point, um, my daughter was very concerned because my sister went through breast cancer and she asked me, can smoking cause breast cancer, mommy? And I said, Taylor, I said, smoking is just a habit that it's very difficult once you start it. And I think it's something that you have to know that if you start it, you may not be able to stop. Mm -hmm. And so I you know, really want you to think about that before you ever take it from somebody. And um, she, she got pretty angry with my sister. And, um, wanted her to stop and actually confronted her several really? times to stop and um, and, it, and my sister spoke to, her, to them about it which was good and she said you know this is not something that I want to do I would like to stop and I've tried too many times I just can't I have really hard time I keep wanting to go back to it so we had yeah. those sounds like people use that as a good object lesson for the kids yes and having someone in the immediate family that smokes and really regrets it or has suffered some health consequences because of it, that's really useful for helping persuade kids that you don't want to go down that path. So, One of the things that I have found with my sister and my husband's mother being smokers is that I don't want them to consider them bad people because they smoke. I want my children to understand that this is something that they started and they tried and they can't it's very difficult to get through. Mm -hmm. But I don't want them to feel negatively towards them because I don't believe it's something that is easily, um, that they can easily um, forget or get rid of or stop. Yeah, and I think that's an important distinction to make. I mean, I think that's a really good thing to tell kids mm -hmm. is that this doesn't make them bad people. Right. And it, people that don't smoke doesn't make them automatically good people. Right. It's just something you either choose to do or not to do that really can affect your health and your looks and lots of other things. And so because I love you and care about you, I really want you to make the decision never to try those things. I don't want you to wind up like Aunt Judy, hooked on something that you wish you weren't hooked on and knowing that it could be killing you at any moment. Both um, of my children are in, uh, very athletic. Uh -huh, and um, my daughter especially is in gymnastics. Mm -hmm. And we talked about, we've already spoken about the fact that smoking can, um, can hurt her with her abilities to win trophies and, and move forward because it can, it fills up their lungs and it can cause, you know, um, illness within your lungs. And, um, and so we've talked to her about that and she knows that gymnastics is very important to her and that she wants to continue to be the best athlete she can. Great. And my son, who's five, he's very interested in every aspect of sports, and he, but he also does gymnastics. And I think those are important things with that, with just the, the athletic part of it. Sure. Anything else you can think about doing that might help your kids make a decision not to smoke someday? 
Well, I like to, sh I generally like to share with them, um, we discuss a lot at bedtime. I mean, mm -hmm. that's when we have our little talks and we do speak about um, smoking and, and drugs and, you know, several other things that come up throughout their day and, mm -hmm. and how important it is. We'd like them, you know, to, to be healthy the rest of their life and live a long life. So I think those are times that we do that and, um, and enjoy that with each other. Yeah, those bedtime quiet talks are a real good time to get through to kids. Uh, and helping develop that underlying value of we want you to be healthy and you know that that's so fundamental to being happy in life is to do what you can to keep your health uh, even when you're not talking about cigarettes or anything else just we want you to eat right get enough sleep you know get checkups at the doctor because it's, you know it's so important to stay healthy right. and to make that a family value and then it's by extension not smoking will be easy because if you really buy into I want to be healthy and there are things out there that I don't want to do because I want to be a healthy person, getting that value across is uh, you know, really a terrific gift you can give your children. Yes. Kim, I think you're doing such a great job keeping those lines of communication open with your daughter. And I think that will give you the foundation to really be even more of a positive influence as she gets to be a preteen and a teenager. Uh, thank you for sharing all your ideas with us and for coming in today and being part of this program. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed speaking with you today.